Hi guys, welcome back to the Flat Water. What we're going to be looking at today is uh, some work, again, by Zetetic Astronomy, the Bible of Flat Earth, by Parallax or Samuel Burley Robotham, Earth's Not a Globe. What we're looking at today is the actual age of the Earth. So, you know, you might think that uh, this is quite a large topic, quite a important thing to look at. So, you know, this is a pretty big deal, this information. If what I'm about to read you is true, I think that, well, it's one of the most important pieces of scientific information that's ever been generated. So what I'm doing here is I'm just locating this part of the file that we want to look at. Because the sun and the moon rotate above the Earth's surface. They're just by the mere fact of the way that this system is functioning, we're able to draw some conclusions uh, about the, the age of the Earth that would normally be very difficult to find out, if not impossible. It'd be impossible to solve this problem. So, just give me a moment here, I'm going to try to find the rest. So, the age of the Earth. We're going to be talking about the age of the Earth. Normally, for any number of reasons, finding out the age of the Earth is extremely difficult. Uh, one way that uh, science has, has attempted to try to do this through geology or other processes is through attempting to date rocks and other natural phenomena, trying to guess their ages from how long they assume or how long that they figure that something ages at by figuring out the the time it takes for a process to occur, like making coal, and then how much of that process there is, and they add up those numbers, and you can come out with some rough guesstimates, or by taking ice core sampling or core sampling from rocks deep down in the earth. Other examples exist out there of ways that have been attempted to age the earth, but none of them have been reliable. None of them have been even anywhere close, I think, to coming anywhere near the truth of the matter. So, we're going to be looking at Zetetic Astronomy today by Parallax Samuel Burley Robotham. Chapter, let's see here, Chapter 7, The Sun's Path Expands and Contracts Daily for Six Months Alternately. This is a matter of absolute certainty, proved by what is called in technical language the Northern and Southern Declination which is simply saying that the sun's path is nearest the polar center in summer and farthest away from it in winter. At noon on 21st of any December, let a rod be so fixed that on looking along it, the line of sight touches the lower edge of the sun. For several days, this line of sight will continue nearly the same, showing that the sun's path for this period is little changed. But on the ninth or tenth day to touch the sun's lower edge, the rod will have to be lifted several degrees towards the zenith. Every day afterwards, until the 22nd of June, the rod will have to be raised. On that date, there will again be several days without any visible change, after which, day by day, the rod must be lowered until the 21st December. In this simple way, it may be demonstrated that the sun's path gets larger every day, from December 21st to June 22nd, and smaller every day from June 22nd to December 21st of every year. From a number of observations made by the author during the last 25 years, it is certain that both the minimum, or June path of the sun, and maximum, or December path, have been gradually getting farther from the northern center. The amount of expansion is very small, but easily detected. And if it has been going on for centuries, which seems consistent with known phenomena, it explains at once and perfectly the fact that England, as well as more northern latitudes, have once been tropical. There is abundant evidence that the conditions and productions now found within the tropics have once existed 
in the northern region, which is now so cold and desolate and inimical to ordinary animal and vegetable life. Hence, it is a proper and logical conclusion that the sun's path was once very near to the Earth's arctic or polar center. The following diagram, figure 60, will show the sun's peculiar path. N represents the polar center. A, the sun in its path in June, which daily expands like the coils of the mainspring of a watch, until it reaches the outer and larger path B in December, after which the path gradually and day by day contracts until it, be until it again becomes the path A on the 21st of June. That such is the sun's annual course is demonstrable actual observation. But if it is asked why it traverses such a peculiarly concentric path, no practical answer can be given, and no theory or speculation can be tolerated. At no distant period, perhaps, we may have collected sufficient matter-of-fact evidence to enable us to understand it, but until that occurs, the ascetic process only permits us to say, the peculiar motion is visible to us, but of the cause, at present, we are ignorant. So I thought that was a really interesting article, a really interesting portion of zetetic astronomy. So the portion that I'd like to focus on here is just before the diagram from a number of observations made by the author during the last 25 years it's certain that both the minimum or June path of the Sun and maximum or December path have been gradually getting farther from the northern center. The amount of expansion is very small but easily detected and if it's been going on for centuries, which seems consistent, it explains at once and perfectly the fact that England, as well as more northern latitudes, have once been tropical. There is abundant evidence that the conditions and productions now found within the tropics have once existed in the northern region, which is now so cold and desolate, and inimical to ordinary animal and vegetable life. So what he's saying there is that in the past, the sun's path was much much tighter around the northern pole that because the sun is continuing to expand its arc every year by a tiny amount that we can consider that if we take that amount and track it back then we can surmise and assume that at some point the sun stayed very close to the northern pole so why this is extremely crazy and extremely important information is because if we can figure out the amount that that change is occurring that the Sun is continuing to extend its distance every year if we can figure out that amount we can track it back and by doing so we could get a rough guesstimate or date for how long the earth has been here or at least how long the Sun has been continuing its path continuing to expand its path. So, wouldn't it be funny if we figured out from the amount that it changes every year and we tracked it back that it came out to, say, I don't know, five to seven thousand years? It's uh, pretty interesting information, to say the least. Okay, I'll just leave you guys with that. Thanks very much. Thanks for watching. Ciao. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video presentation. If you did, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, like the video, and share it on your favorite social media sites. There's a lot more to come, so stay tuned and we'll see you back next time.